Well, here I am. I called it on the uh, cut test for the uh, the TS-182 um, knife here in M390. Uh, as you can see from my count, I got basically just 500. And that's kind of when paper in that area, you know, I can kind of get it, but it's not super reliable. There you go. Yeah. So that's basically where I'm calling it. Uh, 500 cuts, which, um, hey, that ain't bad. Um, it's certainly not the 730 that the S90V did, but S90V, we know, has some trade offs. So it has more edge holding uh, or edge retention, but uh, M390 is a little bit better uh, overall steel. You know, much more corrosion resistant and. Uh, um, toughness and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, what I do kind of want to try to do a little bit here is uh, go ahead and give this guy a little strap up there to see if um, that's all it really needs to uh, to bring this edge back, or if uh, it does need a little bit more serious sharpening. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, Again, beforehand, um, in case you weren't aware, I'm basically using three eighths of an inch uh, twisted sizzle rope for uh, for the cut test. It's a little over nine and a half millimeters, and I'm just cutting it on this uh, poly cutting board here. You can see all sorts of uh, brownness <laughs> from uh, all the different cuts. So, alrighty. Uh, generally with this, I'll, I'll go ahead and do uh, five passes, four passes, three, two, one, blah, 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 or whatever. So I'll go ahead and give that a shot. Keeping in mind that um, I still have an amazing edge down here. So I'm only going to really pay attention to up here. And I do have a little bit of fine on the other side. All right, let's see, what does that buy me? It doesn't quite have the, uh, the polished edge back on there. Uh, I probably would need to uh, grind that a bit, but uh, you certainly are back to a eh, decent working edge. Yeah, I do want to actually uh, put that back. I'd probably only put it back on like the uh, the 12,000 belt or something like that. And then uh, just drop it back up from there. But yeah, so we got 500 cuts from there. Uh, I honestly don't have any other company's M390 to be able to compare it against. But uh, I can certainly uh, take a look at some uh, other people's cut tests. Um, you know, Sajukaneda certainly has a fairly in-depth um, uh, spreadsheet of all of, all of his uh, results. Keeping in mind that um, most of them are quite a bit different uh, than mine in that he uses a 10 millimeter rope, which would be... A little bit thicker than the rope that I'm using but he also has a uh, less acute angle as he's using uh, 17 degrees on the KME where I'm using basically 15 degrees on um, the uh, Ken Onion uh, work sharp with the uh, the belt grinder attachment with uh, a whole bunch of uh, extra leather honing belts and whatnot <laughs> this guy is um, super loaded up uh, this is a leather belt that I have some um, diamond uh, lapping paste put into it. That one's the fun, so it's like 200,000 grit, which, whatever. I just basically use it as a, as a nice buff to uh, polish up the edge. But uh, obviously, as you can tell from the amount of gray on there, that, uh, yeah, it does actually remove steel and uh, sharpens things up. So, sweet. Uh, 
Something to note, uh, I actually got kind of worried with this guy right off the bat. Uh, I did 50 cuts and then took it to a piece of paper to uh, do the cut test. And uh, I immediately lost that uh, polished edge feeling of just gliding through the paper. Um, and uh, I was actually pretty, pretty darn worried that maybe the steel was way too soft. But it held that working edge that um, it lost the polish pretty quick. But, you know, it went through another 450 cuts on the rope before it finally decided that uh, paper is just uh, a little bit too much for me. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, it's still a working edge, obviously. Um, I could continue to cut rope for days, probably. But, uh that's obviously putting a lot of downward force into it. Well, there you go. Uh, so that's good to uh, see that uh, Tucson M390, at least newer stuff, is uh, working pretty darn well. Uh, so that's great. Uh, I did have somebody uh, kind of make a request on the channel a little while ago about uh, this little duder, the uh, CJRB in um, AR RPM 9 instead of a D2, uh, because this is basically uh, the only knife that they've put out so far with the steel in there. It's kind of in their trial runs, but uh, uh, yeah, I will certainly give it a shot. Um, from what I understand, it's uh, probably similar in uh, edge retention performance as D2. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. But it's also very stainless, which D2 is only semi-stainless. So uh, this should work out better for uh, people in uh, humid clients and or humid climates or other, you know, more uh, acidic or uh, salinic uh, environments. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is next up on the uh, chopping block, literally, <laughs> for. Uh, for the cut test. Um, this one should be fun. Um, it's always a little bit more challenging with a smaller knife, but uh, like I was saying, uh, I do really like that uh, barong shape and it should probably help out quite a bit with me doing a lot of those cuts. Um, and this one in particular, I probably will see at first uh, how choking up would actually do, but I have a feeling I'm not going to get quite enough leverage, so I am going to want to go back here. But we'll see how how it goes. Uh, yeah, either way, this is next up on the block. Um, I'm not sure what's up after that. Uh, I have a whole bunch of uh, D2 and 14C28N from uh, Tucson. Uh, let's see. I do have a couple others at M390 uh, that I could try. Um, just as a comparison, this uh, TS-180 from Tepe Design would probably be my choice for uh, the next one there. Um, another super nice knife. I really want to anodize this because of titanium things. But uh, I also have uh, this little duty from uh, Max Chachuk. Uh This is also an M390. Uh, very, very early lockup. Um, I will mention that in my review once I actually get around to it because this is a fairly high number but uh yeah i super like the knife but it is uh, a little dainty for you know doing a lot of forceful cuts so we'll see but uh yeah i also have you know some other things that i could probably get around to uh doing some cut tests with um i did start a little bit on uh, the spyderco m4 uh manix 2 but uh I've actually used it for some other things, so I basically want to redo the edge on this thing and then start over so that, you know, I actually get a, a clean testing analysis on it instead of, you know, oh, well, I did a fair amount of cuts here, as well as also broke down like 40 boxes and, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever else that I might have done with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I could also do something around, uh, well, this is the M4 version of the Manix 2XL. 
how does it stack up against the original and S30V from them? That might be kind of an interesting uh, sort of thing there. I mean, I also have, you know, the Benchmade 940 and F30V. But, uh, man, with how thick that uh, blade comes down to there, it might be a little bit more like chopping it with an axe. Uh, so uh, I would probably rather do that one there. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess also as a random thing, I also have some SK5. Um, interesting that it's on a folder. <laughs> um, it's also interesting because it probably won't take very long to actually get through that. So that might be kind of my next up kind of thing to take a look at here. Um, because uh, SK5 isn't, uh, you know, the most edge holding thing, but, um, you know, it's... A, High carbon steel, really great toughness, and um, yeah, and a lot of other companies end up using it as well. Um, Cold Steel, uh, I think, still uses it in quite a few of their uh, fixed blades, so uh, that could be fun as well. And yeah. you know, obviously, not take anywhere near as long as five to eight hundred cuts. <laughs> But cool, yeah. Anyway, I've rambled on for far too long. Next up, I'm doing AR RPM nine on this uh, Rio. It's also sharpened. Um, this is a 17 degree angle instead of the 15 that these are, just due to that's how I end up doing a lot of my uh, a lot of my knives. A lot of the uh, particle metallurgy steel and uh, other really high end stuff. I'll do it 15 degree. Um, some of the uh, the mid grade stuff, uh, D2, um, AR RPM9, 14C, 28N. I'll do that at 17, and then any of the um, quite cheap steels, or uh, you know, just lesser overall, 440C or anything like that. I'll, I'll keep that at a 20 degree, just so I have enough strength behind there. So that's kind of my my methodology. This is going to be a 17 degree. Uh, polished um, Ken Onion uh, blade grinder attachment edge. So it might be a little bit uh, more similar to uh, Cedric and Ada's cutting tests. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for uh, coming along for uh, this whole cutting journey. Um, it leaves a lot of fibers, and I have just an enormous amount of candling to the right side of me over here. <laughs> Anyway, uh, as always, I uh, appreciate y'all, and uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.